Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how I went from this image to that image in Photoshop. All right, my name is Philip and let's jump right into Photoshop. So before I can tell you what I did to the image to make it look the way it did, I first have to tell you how I actually arrived here because this was an image which was stitched together out of many other or many images basically. And I don't know if you realize, but you can see the sky very well, but you can also see the grass very well. And the reason for this is that this is a panoramic image composed out of HDR images. So what that means is from each of the basically parts of the image, I took three different images with different lighting conditions. For example, this part here, you can see everything a little bit. Then I have taken one where you can see the sky very well, and then I have taken one where you can see the ground very well. And I did this for all the scenes which were then part of that image. And I loaded these scenes, like the three pictures with, you know, a lot of exposure, not as much exposure, and like a medium exposure into a software called Photomatics. And if you do not know Photomatics, then just have a look at the blog because you will find it there. And Well, not the software itself because you actually have to pay for that, but some explanations about it. And there's a guy called Trey Redcliffe who is a master in this software. And what the software does, it combines the different exposure images into one image where you can have different presets if you wanted to, or where you can have full control over what you want to have visible from each of the images. So in these, for example, resulting images, you can see the sky very well, you can see the cars very well, and you can see the foreground very well. Whereas if you were to take just one picture, you would just see either the sky and the, the foreground would be a bit dark, or you have, would have a perfect foreground, but the sky would be kind of washed out. So with HDR methods, you can just basically go around that problem and create one image where everything is visible. So that's what I did, and I had in the end four images which were combined or which were created following this method in Photomatic. So I have this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. So these were the four images where you can see everything kind of well, and these were used then in Photoshop. Now let's let me show you how to load these up in Photoshop in the first place. So what you have to do is you go to File, Scripts, and then Load Files into Stack, and then you go to Browse and you'll find your images. I'm just going to select the HDR versions and I'm going to hit open. I'm going to hit OK and now it's going to load them up as layers in Photoshop. That's going to take about a couple of seconds and I'll bring you back once it's done. And we're back and it's done. So now we have the different parts of the image as layers here in Photoshop. Now we have to combine them in the first place. So in order to do that, I'm going to order them quickly first, just looking at the little thumbnails down here. So it looks like that this one should be above this one. Yeah, something like that looks all right. Then I'm going to select them all by clicking on the first one, hold shift and click on the last one. And then I'll go to image and order align layers. And order align is a perfect function. You could do all these things manually, but order align mostly, one of these functions will do the trick for you. So in my case, I actually clicked through a couple of them to see which one works best. And I just know that cylindrical works best for my image. So I'm just going to hit OK. And now Photoshop will try to combine these images to create a panorama. And depending on your images, does it works better or works, sorry, excuse me, worse. Um, but it depends a little bit on the kind of images you take. So in this case, let's just wait maybe about half a minute because the files are quite large. And then once more, I'll be go back once it's done. And once more, Photoshop has decided to finish. Now let's continue. So what you can see now is that Photoshop did a kind of weird thing with the images in order to stitch them together to create the panorama. And as it just so happens, I just realized right now we actually do not need two of them. That is very depressing because I did use them in the first one, but you know, that is the way it goes. So instead I will delete these two, one and two. So they're gone. Now we just have the two and that's all we need actually. So I'm going to click on the, the lower one, which is this half right here. And let me make that brush a little bit bigger that you can actually see what I'm talking about. So this one right here, I'm going to hit Command and T, which will bring up the free transform tool. And I'm just going to drag it a tiny bit upwards to something like that, just to match up the horizons down here a little bit better. Once I'm done, I'm going to hit OK, and I'm happy with that. I'm going to select the first one because you see there is an edge right here, right? And that is normal because of the edges of a wide angle camera. Sometimes you get a little bit of a, well, other than distortion, of course, you get a little bit of darkness and that shouldn't be darkness. So let's create a clear layer. Philip has to learn to speak. Let's create a layer mask just by clicking on the little Japanese symbol down here and you'll have the layer mask on that layer. The layer mask is white. So if I choose my brush by hitting B on the keyboard and I make sure that white is my foreground color with an opacity of say 50%, I can just start 
to brush through, of course, I have to select black as the color and not white. Just hit, hit X on the keyboard and it'll be done. And then with 50%, let's make that 100 for the sky. I'm just going to get rid of that border here. Now we have a beautiful and seamless sky. Don't want to get rid of that one here, do we? And let's actually take the Wacom tablet for that because it's a little bit easier. Get in there and here's a bit of a tricky part because we have to decide how much of each scene do we actually want. So let's select this one here, press V and bring that down just a notch. I just want this there to line up perfectly. Good, that does the trick. Go back to the layer mask and press B for our brush. And now let's get rid of uh, these things by doing just that. And when I say that, I mean just brushing through, right? Good. If I hold space, I can move around on the canvas, which is not bad at all. Uh, let's, bring it, uh, let's bring it back here and then make it disappear over here. Nice, seamless edge. We're going to crop it a little bit in anyway, so no worries if it's not perfect. Good. So that's the first step. Now we have combined these two images and we have created the panoramic scene itself. Good stuff. So I could do now hit Command E, which will combine anything, but instead I'm going to hit Command Alt Shift and E on the keyboard, which will do a so called stamp visible, and that'll bring everything you can see onto a new layer. Great stuff. Now I hit C on the keyboard, which brings up my crop tool, and with the crop tool, I'm going to get rid of a little bit of what we don't need, such as everything which is super high and everything which is uh, wide on the sides. We don't actually want that. We're going to keep a little bit though. I'm going to show you later what for. So let's uh, maybe stick to something like that. And uh, yeah, we're going to probably just go in a notch to something like that. And here on the sides, I don't want to lose too much. Maybe something like this. That is not bad at all. I think actually you may go a little bit higher than that to something like that. Cool. Let's hit enter. It's going to think for a second or three. Perfect. So now we still have the problem of having a kind of super weird edges right here which is not a problem at all. So what I can do, I can just hit Command and T, which will bring up the uh, free transform tool. I'm gonna hit that little button right here on the top, if you can see that. And that allows me to drag corners around and do a basically, you know, distortion of the image. And that is in this case, what I do want. So let's do maybe something like that. That is fine. And also down here, I'm just gonna grab that corner and pull it just a tiny bit towards the edges. I don't wanna do it too much, but a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now Photoshop has to think a little bit after pressing enter and here we are. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer by, for example, creating the new layer symbol in the lower right corner that right there. I'm going to press J on my keyboard which brings up the spot heating brush tool. I'm just going to go over that corner and it's going to make a cloud out of it. Isn't that just awesome? Cool. Let's zoom in and do the same thing for the sides here. Let's just see how it works if we just do it like that. Did a good job, can't complain. And let's go in a little bit further and do the same thing here and see what happens, that's good. All right, let's get rid of this up here. Great, I just love the spot healing brush tool. 85% <laughs> of the cases, it just does exactly what I'm looking for, such as today right here. Let's do it here and see what happens. I'll just give it a good old, good old, good old, good school try or however you call it in English. I'm not 100% sure, so let's just hit it here again. Okay, that's not bad. And we can bring back the, the wall here later if we feel like. No big deal. Okay, let's do the same thing here. And I would like to keep that tree actually. So let's stop here. Okay, zoom in a little bit further. Hit S on the keyboard, which brings up the clone stamp tool. And I'm just going to select the source by hitting Alt, holding it and selecting it here in the tree. And with an opacity of 100%, I'm just going to bring that over. And same for the wall right here. I'm just going to make sure I'll drag that all towards the edge right like so. And the same back here. <laughs> and then we're going to use a little bit of a hot clone stamp action to, to make it complete. Actually, we don't need that part. So let's hit J and do it like that. And it's going to go away. And I'm wondering what happens if we do something like this. Perfect. Thank you very much. Photoshop. Good. So now we have done this side. And just not to let you wait forever, I'm going to do the other side and then I'll bring you back. Okay, here we are. Now we have left and right of the image kind of fixed. That's kind of nice. So there's something which is incredibly ugly in that image. I don't know if you can see it, but look at that. Let me zoom in a little bit more, then you can definitely see it. Holy damn. Who had that brilliant idea? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll create a new layer by hitting the new layer symbol down here. I'm going to 
choose the let me click on it the patch tool right here okay so you're gonna select the patch tool at least that's the way i'm doing it and actually i remember that doesn't work on empty layers so let's delete that new layer and create a stamp visible by hitting command alt shift and e so you have to have a layer with something on it in order for it to work and what i'll do is with the the patch tool thingy doodly selected i'll just select all that area right here and i'll drag and yeah, drop it basically over here I'm going to hit deselect and what will it do it kind of takes the texture of whatever is over here and puts it over here i'm going to do that a couple of times until i'm completely happy with the whole situation something like that deselect that's very good i'm just going to go in small steps just like that i'm doing a very rough job here normally i would take a little bit more care but it does the trick the job very very good so i don't mind if there's a bit of brown grass but i do not want this this texture i don't even know what it is. I think it's used to grow grass a little bit better. Whatever. We do not want it on our castle today, do we? No, we do not. So let's get completely rid of it like so. And just drag it over and hit deselect by hitting Command and D on the keyboard. Great. So now at least we don't have this kind of ugly texture. Ooh, horrible. Let's get rid of that as well and just drag it over. Deselect. Goody. That is very nice. I am liking it a lot. So that is perfect. Let's clean up a little bit more. So I don't actually want uh, that many signs of humanity in there, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to create a new layer, hit J on the keyboard, which I can't because that's the patch tool. Let's select the spot healing brush tool and go in and just get rid of this dude here. Perfect. Let me click here once. All right. And then let's get rid of, of you in a second. Well, let's get rid of you first. Maybe that helps. It does. That's not bad. What happens if I just do like that? <sighs> I just love that tool. Isn't that awesome? So, of course, you could clone stamp or whatever. There are many things you could do, but I like to choose the fastest way, and that is so fast. Uh, oh, a little hill. Oh, better. Thank you. And then there is something different here. We don't want this. Go away. Be gone. And that looks like a boat of some sort. Okay. Okay. Be gone boat. Let's do this. Okay. That looks a bit better. Cool. Remember, we were quite far zoomed in there, so this shouldn't be any issue. Perfect, so now we have cleaned up the image a little bit, and there is another house over here, which you, I don't know if you can see that. It is uh, right here, but I do not mind this one. I think it's actually quite interesting, because it's not a not a modern glass building of some sort. It's just a random stone house. Perfect, let's work on the sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a curve adjustment layer, and I'll drag the brightness down to something like this. And if you have watched a couple of my uh, videos, then you know I'm just a big fan of really dramatic scenes. I'm just loving them. Cool. So now we have a dramatic everything, or a dark everything, for, for now at least. I'm going to hit Command and I on the keyboard, get my brush. Command and I is going to hide the whole adjustment on the image. And if I paint with the brush and an opacity of, say, I don't know, 50%, I can bring back, if I paint in white on a black layer mask, I can bring back the effect wherever I feel like. And I feel like it should be in the sky, shouldn't it? Good. That's not bad at all. Okay, something like that. Good. Now I'm going to create another stamp visible by hitting Command Alt Shift and E on the keyboard. And I'm going to use one of my or the favorite Nick Collection filter of all times. At least that's the only one I'm using for, since the last, I don't know, three weeks, kind of regularly. Uh, because it always looks good and any dramatic scene, loving it. So let's now let think for a second. Yes, think, do it, do it right now. Okay, there you go. And it's called the Tonal Contrast. So let's find the Tonal con Contrast. Here it is. And I'll just go you know, back and forth and just look at that sky, man. Holy damn. Okay. And also does something very nice to the grass and to the castle. So we're just going to take it the way it is. Hit OK. And it's going to think for a second. One, two, three. All right. I'll bring you back once it's done. <laughs> and we're back. And that took a while. Good. Now let's zoom in and see if we like what it did. Or we did like, or we do like what it did. I mean, we got a lot of noise. So you see there are a lot of kind of weird pixel crap going on in the sky but that is perfectly fine with me we can get rid of this any second later good and let's finish the sky basically by do we want to make a copy of that no I'll just use the same layer so I'm gonna do the following I'm gonna do right click and I'm gonna say convert to smart object I'm gonna do this because I'm gonna run a blur filter on it a radial blur filter and because I'm doing this I want to make sure that I can after applying the filter still change it right and in order to do that, it has to be a very smart object because, you know, just smart things can change things. I guess that's the logic behind it. Okay, let's put the center of the blur and I want kind of a zoom blur going from the, set of the castle, basically, towards the edges of the image. And let's choose a, 
a random pixel amount, or we can always change later. Let's try 10 and see what happens. Okay, 10 is actually more than enough. I'm very happy with this. So let's pop a layer mask on that. Hit Command and I on that layer mask to hide the whole effect. And with an opacity of 50% and a black, white, damn it, white brush, I'm just going to paint the effect through over parts of the sky. I'm taking care to leave some space in the very horizon because it, you know, I don't know, it just looks better to me if it's not there. Good. So, and that'll automatically, whenever you look into the sky, drag the attention of the viewer towards the castle, right? Uh, I'm loving it. That's great. Okay, let's do that. Perfect. So now we have the sky, which is essentially done. I mean, we can do some more work and potentially we will. So let's work a little bit more on the grass and on the castle itself. So first of all, the grass is far too flat for my taste. So an easy way to fixing that is by hitting Command, Alt, Shift and E to do what? Yes, to do a star visible. So everything which is visible is on a new layer now. And I'm going to go to Filter and Camera Raw Filter. And if you wait a second, cool. There's just in the first window here, there's a slider called Clarity. I'll just drag that to the right. And you'll see if you look at the grass, it's just getting much more defined, which is exactly what we're looking for right here. The sky goes a bit nuts, but that's fair enough as well. We can get rid of this. Let's also increase the vibrance a little bit. It's just going to give the whole thing a bit more color. Maybe something like that. Cool. Hit OK. If you manage to hit OK, do it. And <laughs> once you have done that, perfect. Um, I'm going to put a layer mask on that layer because the sky is just far too nuts now. So let's create a layer mask by hitting on the little layer mask symbol down here. Hit B for your brush. Make a noise in big brush. And with an opacity of 100% painting in a black, black foreground color, right? I'll make sure that the effect is gone from the sky. Cool. Be gone effect. Now, thinking about it, maybe we could just with an opacity of 30%, get it back just a little bit here and just a little bit here. It just gives some more definition on the, the you know, clouds which are a little bit further away. Cool, liking that. Now, if you realize there are in the grass some browner patches and then there are some greenish patches, right? An easy way to get rid of this is by creating a new layer and hitting G on your keyboard. G will either bring back your bring up your bucket tool or your gradient tool. Just we want the paint bucket tool right now, so that's good. Hold Alt and select the color which is already in the image, something like a nice green, and just paint that into the image. Now everything is gone, it's no big deal. We're gonna go down to the blending mode hue. And that'll just, you know, give everything the hue you have just painted or paint bucketed, bucketed in. <laughs> you know what I mean? Good. So now we have that and it's everywhere, which is, of course, horrible. So let's create a layer mask. Invert that layer mask by hitting Command and I on the keyboard. Zoom in. Press B for your brush with an opacity of, I don't even know, say 50%. We're going to brush over the areas which were brown previously. We got to get this nice, this nice green hue right there. And also maybe a tiny bit just right here. I'll show you in a second what that did. And also maybe down here a bit. While we're at it, make it a bit small, a bit bigger, a bit smaller, whatever. And just go over it over here. Cool. Let's zoom out a little bit and let's see if we can see before and after. Yes, we can. If you just concentrate on this area right here, you'll see it is much greener now. Now that is perfect. So now that we have done the grass more or less, what we can do is we can increase the contrast a little bit or we can try to make the grass pop even a little bit more. So let's see what we can do. Let's create a stamp by hitting Command, Alt, Shift and E and change its blending mode from normal down to overlay. Now that, yes, look at that. Don't worry, I know it's a bit too saturated, but we, we can fix that. We are able to fix that. Um, it's a bit dark, so let's create a curve adjustment layer and clip this to the layer by hitting this little tiny arrow. So now this adjustment layer is just for this one layer with the overlay stuff and things. And we're going to increase the brightness until we have a feeling that it fits the situation a little bit better. Maybe something like this is not bad. Okay, just, just a tiny odd up bit. Let's put a layer mask on that front here and hit Command and I to hide that layer mask. And while we're at it, actually, let's inverse the layer mask again, because let's decrease the saturation first. So down with the saturation to maybe something like, like, yeah, that's not bad at all. Let's stick with this. Uh, let's go back to the layer mask, invert the painting command, and let's start painting the effect through using a brush. And probably the brush with 50% opacity is enough. Oh, yeah, look at that. Juicy. If that is, that, that is actually a correct botanical term for the look of grass. Juicy. Don't believe me? Look it up. It's true. <laughs> I have no idea, guys. Okay, so that's not bad at all. I kind of like that. It gives the whole thing a very nice feeling to it. And also these plants back here can use a little bit of that. 
beautiful. And if I hold shift and click on the layer mask, it's going to make the layer mask disappear. But I don't think I want it anywhere else than the places where I put it, maybe here, maybe just there, just a little bit. Perfect. So the only thing really missing in that image is, well, actually, one thing is missing. Let's just create a curve adjustment, put it down, inverse it by hitting Command and I, make the, br nash, blah, blah, the, nash, the brush nice and big, and with 30%, just bring down the opacity over here a little bit. And maybe over here as well. It's a little bit too distracting. We don't, we don't need all this attention on these areas, right? Here as well. We can always adjust it uh, a, little, yeah, a little bit later if we feel like. Let's bring it down a notch more. Something like this. Okay. Good. And actually, how about a bit more light around the castle, right? So let's just... I'm using curves. You can do levels. You can do whatever you feel like on them. You know, there is no wrong and no right. I do not want that clipped. I need that in the whole image. Okay. To something like that. I know it looks horrible. Wait, just give me a second right here. And I'll need to pull that on the top. Let's do it. Replay as layer mask. No, 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 Photoshop. I want this layer to be right there. And then these ones have to be clipped again. Right? Okay. So now this is on top and everything looks normal again. Perfect. So what we can do is we're going to double click on that layer. And it brings up the blending options. And what you can do, I want this visible where the underlying layer is bright, right? So I hold Alt, drag that in, and I'm just going to do exactly that. So if you just look around the castle, I'm trying to find now a perfect balance between where it's visible and where it's not visible. And I think something like this will do the trick just nicely. Let's have a look at the before and after. Yeah, it gives a good bit of brightness. And still, we don't want that everywhere. So let's hit the layer mask. And uh, we'll hit Command and I, we're just going to invert it. And with a black brush, we're just going to paint with 50 or, 50 or 60, whatever percent, and bring the brightness through around the castle, right? Photoshop has to think, oh God. <laughs> so, okay, that's not bad at all. Let's see if that made any, uh, any effect. Yes, I like that. Cool. And also I wanted to have some nice birds in the image because otherwise the sky is a bit too empty, right? So I <clears throat> sorry, I opened Google and I said free bird brush Photoshop and I got exactly that, free bird brushes in Photoshop. So you can do exactly the same thing. I mean, you could do them yourself by just using a picture of a bird, blah, 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 blah. but if it's free, why would you? So let's just select that, create a new layer by hitting the new layer symbol. Make sure I have black selected, which I can do by hitting D on the keyboard, which will bring up my default colors. And let's just have to decide a size. Probably that is actually not too bad. And I'm just going to pop them somewhere like uh, here in black. Gonna hit a couple of times. Cool. Now let's zoom in. If we can, we can indeed. Okay, okay. So obviously they are now far to defined, like a lot far to defined. Holy damn. So what we can do first of all, we can bring down the opacity of them to a little bit less, to maybe something, yeah, like 80%. Gonna take a little bit of the sharpness out and then we're gonna go to filler we're gonna go to blur and gaussian blur and now we're gonna have to find a way to make sure that we are blurring them in a way that it looks at least remotely natural so probably zooming out would help right now but i can't so let's just hit okay and see if that's all right i probably could have made them a little a little bit smaller i'm going to leave it like that but you get the idea right choose a couple of birds and just pop them in there Blur them, and they're going to be kind of good in the background. You can also use some of the, the color of the background and paint it onto the birds, and that looks, you know, makes it look, look even more natural. Beautiful. And the original image, I had another bird here, but now you have the idea, so I don't actually have to do it again. Okay, let's just select our normal brush again. Perfect. So when I was doing that image, I thought at this stage, oh, wow, that's actually not bad. I kind of like it. Hmm. But then I thought, well, no, I don't like it because there's something missing in the foreground. So... If I go back to the folder, I have two images, and one looks like that, and the other one looks like that. So, sheep. Yes, every image gets better with sheep. So, I decided to put two sheep in the image, and these are the ones. And uh, I'll quickly show you how to do that just on one sheep, because it actually is quite a while, it takes quite a while to put things in, uh, you know, from one image to the other one. A lot of things to consider, but I'll show you anyway. So, first of all, I'm going to bring that image into Photoshop, and then I'll bring it back in a second. And we're back, and the sheep is in Photoshop. So let's drag it into our file. I'm just going to hit V, which is the move tool, and drag it over into our other file. Perfect. It's here now. While we are here, let's, uh, well, first of all, position it a little bit over there. And then hit Enter just once. And then with right click, 
No, I'm going to have to hit Command and T. Yes, and that brings up the free transform, and let's flip it horizontally. Perfect. Let's make it a bit smaller. It's just ridiculously large. And pop it into the position. And you see it actually doesn't have the rear legs. Not completely, at least. So that was kind of interesting to uh, try to use a bush, <laughs> a piece of grass, to hide that. Cool. Now, let's go in there. And if we can, yes, we can indeed. And uh, zoom in a little bit more. Yes, yes, all good. Just pop a layer mask. Uh, hit OK. Uh, enter. Pop a layer mask on that by hitting the layer mask symbol. Get the brush. And paint away, I said paint away the, uh, first of all, the, you know, the rest of the image. We don't need it. Let's do like that. Okay. <laughs> good, good, good. Uh, something like that. And these things, they take a second. And usually you want to use your, I don't know, pen tool uh, to cut these things out. But for now, this is just a way faster method. I just want to give you like a broad idea of how you can do it, and then you can then you can just do it. You know, you can just go and do it. Brilliant. Okay, good. Okay. Oh, look at that. There's a bit of mm, there's a bit of grass left. Can you see that? Horrible. Of this kind of texture in the grass. Oh, that will bug me for the rest of my life. Okay. Something like that. And here. Okay. Luckily, the animal is standing on grass himself, so that's actually not too bad for us. I'm going to fix the sheep itself in just a second. Okay. So you see these things take a minute, especially even, even if you try to make them fast. Yeah. That's just how it goes. Okay. Let's hit X. Make that a bit smaller. And now we bring back... Oops. A bit more. 50%. Bring back his legs. Poor thing. Needs legs. Hit X. And get rid of everything in here. Or at least a little bit. And also in here. Oh, you don't want to cut off your ding dong. You may keep your ding-dong, okay. <laughs> okay, and then the here bit. Oh, Photoshop has to think in a moment again. And bring back your lag as much as possible. A bit bigger. Here's a bit stuff, okay. And a bit smaller again. And hide it right here. Okay, so I'm gonna, you know, not do it forever, but you do get, you could do the words. You get the idea of how to uh, quickly cut something out, and that's actually very ugly. So you do want to make sure you do that properly. Hey, give me a white, yo. Yeah. Okay, because you know the more time you spend on this one right now, the less time you will have to spend later. Good, so now we have the sheep in there at least. Let's see if it's the correct size. I do believe it is far too massive, so let's hit Command and T and bring it down to something like uh, maybe that. I don't know, you have to see how it fits your image, but I don't think that's bad. Let's just hit OK. That's not bad at all. Cool, let's create a new layer by hitting the new layer symbol down here. Choose S for the clone stamp tool, and I want some of this grass right here because it has a, it's a bit bigger than the surrounding grass, right? So I'm gonna make it a bit larger, select with 100% opacity, a source like uh, right here. I'm just gonna brush that, just like that. Cool, I'm gonna go to hit V and move that over to the sheep. So it has to a little bit look like as if the sheep would stand within that grass, because I just don't have the information of the legs. They're just not there, right? So that's a bit of an issue. So let's make it a bit smaller, maybe do something like this, and maybe put it just right here. Now we're going to have to try to blend that in just a, bit, a little bit, otherwise nobody's going to believe anything. Okay, so let's actually go in there like that. Yeah, I realize there's a bit of an edge here from the, the image overlap initially. We may get rid of this in just one second. Okay, layer mask and hitting with a hitting. You can hit with a brush as well, but you may paint with it in the first place. So let's, let's just try to kind of blend that in just a little bit better, and then we're going to give it a good old school blur, and this will make it uh, completely. Well, yeah, it'll kind of merge it with the background a little bit better. Cool. Okay, let's hit OK right there. Get the brush back and see maybe keep it here. Let's with an opacity of twenty percent. Just try to go over that, okay, and just like that and like that. We don't need much. We just need like a little bit of a bush right there, right? Cool. And let's actually get the brush, uh, which we have all the time. Choose a color, and I'll choose a nice a dark color, which I can't, of course, because I'm on D. Yeah, because I'm on a random layer, of course, where there are no information. Let's just choose freaking black. Black is always good. And with an opacity of about 10%, I know, let's make that actually 5%. 5%. I'm just going to 
paint over here a bit smaller many times just to make the let's make it a bit more seamless between the lag and uh, ah and i'm painting all the time with the layer mask stupid me just like that okay just because i had the feeling the lag was a little bit invisible the lag the leg the lag however you want to call it <laughs> okay so does it actually yeah it does help a little bit but you get the idea right so that's the way to kind of you know merge these things together so let's select this one and say filter blur and say gaussian blur just to give it a tiny blur of obviously not this whole thing but maybe something like that that merges with the background maybe something like this yeah that, that, that's fine I'm, I'm quite happy with that let's just hit okay and let's zoom out and see if people could believe that yeah maybe a bit more bush but yeah it's not bad at all but for this we will have to definitely darken that so let's put a little curve adjustment layer here darken that curve adjustment layer like so invert the curve adjustment layer of course make it go away invert it get the brush make it nice and big and just paint through with black and an opacity is 40 percent say i have to of course paint it through with white i have a white black disabled disability no i don't okay let's like that, maybe even a bit more, that it's still a little bit too hot, right? Don't you have the feeling it's a bit too hot? I do have the feeling it's a little bit too hot. And sheep, you yourself, you're quite hot. Yes, it's a hot sheep. So let's select the sheep and put a layer mask, hit Command, Alt, and G, which will clip that layer mask onto the sheep. And if I now decrease the brightness, just the sheep and whatever we forgot to cut out will get a little bit darker. Maybe just, just something like that. Right, just to make it blend a little bit better. Cool, and now we see we have the same problem on the feet. So what I usually would do, I would just take another piece of grass from somewhere, right, and pop it in there as well. Or just on this one right there, because this one is a little bit missing, right? And or, and or, um, you can just use, well, let's just quickly show you how to do it. Choose a new layer, right? Press L for your lasso tool, and or your pen tool. I would always recommend the pen tool if you're for precision which is always not bad in these kind of things. I'm doing that very rough now, right? And I'm going to hit Command and J, which will not do actually anything because we need the information on the sheep. So let's do it here. Hit Command and J. That'll create a new layer. Pull that one. No, let's take this one and pull it right here. Clip it to the layer beneath. Perfect. So now we have a lag here. <laughs> yes, we have a lag. Yes, we do have a lag. Okay, let's hit V, and now we can move this piece of the lag around, right? So if we felt like we can hit Command and H, which is going to hide that piece, and we can just drag this, place it on the... I managed to do that, try not loud, come here, yes, zoom in a little bit, place it on the other lag, right? And then as well, cut the whole lag out and move it a little bit to the front. And then will give the whole thing a little bit more, more realism because it actually has a foot, right? It wouldn't have a foot it would look kind of weird now in this instance i believe the easier way would just to use a damn layer mask press b for a for a brush and with black i'm just going to paint with 50 percent and just remove a little bit like a here obviously it's not going to make it realistic right now because there is no grass covering the foot which is impossible in these kind of situations but uh, we're going to have to live with it right now okay uh, here's a little bit more crap around everywhere <laughs> But again, I'm doing it really, really, really fast right now. And you can see in the original image, I took a bit more time. Okay, so that's the one sheep. And you can easily you know, fit that in like that. And also remember, if you have these kind of images, make sure that you know where the light source is. And then make sure that the shadow of your whatever you're going to put into the image actually suit the light source. Okay, so if the light is coming from sort of there, then it can't be that there is no shadow whatsoever on or behind that image. It's always difficult to create shadows, at least on a really sunny day. If it's like a day like this, I really don't care. I'm just going to bring it down, make it bright again by hitting Command and I, making the layer, uh, the brush a little bit bigger, and I'll just bring that darkness through right under that sheep. I'm going to make it a little bit longer, something like that. Okay, maybe even here a little bit. Cool. Okay, that's not bad. And we can maybe just to make sure. Yeah, not bad. Okay, and here as well. So just, you know, under the animal, paint it a little bit darker, and then it will just fit right in. And in the original image, as you may have seen, there's another sheep right here, but it would take far too much time to show you how I did that, uh, because it's exactly the same, and it just takes time. That's it. Cool. Now, 
well, the last thing I would like to do, and that is the very, very much last thing I would like to do, right, is I'm going to create a stamp pistol by hitting Command Alt Shift and E on the keyboard as ten times before. And when I have, once I have done that, I will uh, select the hue saturation layer. And with that selected, I think I'm going to go to yellow and increase saturation and uh, hue. And I'll just want to see if I can get this this tree right here. Okay, this tree right there. I want to see if I'm able to select this tree only. Yeah, that'll do the trick, I guess, just nicely. Let's just do that. Cool. Okay, let's bring that down again. That's actually a neat way to select things, right? So if we crank everything up, you see exactly whatever whatever goes nuts is what you what you're selecting. And let's change the hue of this tree to a nice whatever that color would be. <laughs> and we're going to invert that. And now with a brush and an opacity of 100%, let's be brave, we're going to brush that through through this tree and this tree only, right? Because this tree has to be a bit more purple, otherwise it doesn't just, just doesn't fit in here. Okay, something like that. Again, you want to take your time, right? You don't have to rush anything. There's no rush in Photoshop. And, uh, but that's a way, a simple way to change the color of a plant, especially if it's a plant which kind of stands alone. Right? I did the same for the other tree just over here. But uh, again, same thing, no need. Same thing, exactly the same thing. Okay, and that is essentially how I used Photoshop to work on this image. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I know I couldn't this time recreate the exact image I have processed here, but, you know, the original processing was seven hours, and trying to push that into half an hour is kind of hard. So uh, I apologize, but at least I showed you everything and every technique I used to create the image itself. I'm going to list and link some useful information about HDR and uh, informatics and stuff like that down in the description. And if you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to drop them in any comment section, either on YouTube or on the blog or on any other social network, wherever you can find me, and you can find me everywhere. Cool. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the like button. And also, if you haven't already, and you like the weekly Photoshop stuff and things, then don't forget to subscribe. I shall see you the next time, and that's going to be it. Bye!